Welcome to Jumpstart Board Games. I'm here to quickly teach new players what they need to know to jump into a board game. Please be aware that this is not a full teach, and a game runner that knows the complete rules will still be needed to play the game. Game runners can stick around until the end of the video for some reminders about setup and circumstantial rules. Horrified was designed by Prospero Hall and published by Ravensburger. It plays one to five players. Horrified takes place in an unfortunate village that is being troubled by some classic Universal Studios monsters. Fortunately for the villagers, we the heroes have arrived to help rid them of this nuisance. The heroes will be collecting items that can be used to defeat the monsters while they work to defend villagers and get them to safety. Horrified is a cooperative game where all players will be working together to defeat monsters. The game uses an action point system and includes some pick up and deliver mechanisms. The game will end in one of three ways. Throughout the game, if heroes or villagers are defeated in battle, the terror level will rise. Once it reaches the end of the track, the heroes will lose. At the beginning of each monster phase, a monster card must be drawn. If there are no monster cards left in the deck to draw, then the heroes lose. If the heroes are able to defeat all the monsters before either of the previous two things happen, then the heroes win. Heroes will defeat the monsters by collecting items and using them to complete objectives that are specific to each monster. The game is made up of an indeterminate number of rounds. Each round will consist of a hero phase and a monster phase. During the hero phase, the current player will use their available action points to do various actions and to move them closer to victory. During the monster phase, monsters might move perform a special ability, or attack. At the beginning of the game, each player will get a hero badge. At the top of the hero badge, you will see a number which signifies the number of actions your hero can take every turn. There are seven possible actions a player can use. These are found on the player aid card. The first is move. This action allows a player to move to an adjacent space along a lighted path. This does not include water locations, and heroes can only cross rivers over bridges. While using the move action, a hero can bring any number of villagers with them. The next is guide. The guide action allows a hero to move a villager to or from an adjacent space. This can be important to try and get villagers to safety and away from the monsters. Next is pickup. This allows a hero to pick up any number of items in their current location. Another action option is share. Taking this action will allow all heroes in the current player's location to freely share items between themselves. The advance action is important to progress towards defeating the monsters. The defeat action can be taken if the hero meets the requirements found on the monster's mat. Many, but not all, heroes will have a special action on their hero badge. A hero's special action is also available to the hero. At the beginning of the game, all players receive one perk card. Throughout the game, there is an opportunity to get additional perk cards. Any player can use any perk card during any hero phase. Once a player is done using actions and playing perk cards, the hero phase will end and the monster phase will begin. During the monster phase, no perk cards can be played. The first thing you do in the monster phase is to draw the top card from the monster deck. The number at the top of the card tells you how many new items are going to be added to the map. Randomly grab that many items from the bag and add each one to the location on the board that matches the location on the item. Next, check the symbol in the middle of the event section. If there's a villager symbol, then follow the directions given for the event. This usually includes adding villagers to the board. If the symbol matches a monster that's in your game, then follow the directions listed in the event area of the card. Next, check the monster symbols at the bottom of the card from left to right. If the monster is in your game that matches the symbol, then you will move the monster that number of spaces listed to the right, towards the closest hero or villager. 
After movement, if the monster is in a space with a hero or villager, then roll the number of dice in the bottom right. For any die result that shows the power symbol, activate the monster's power that number of times. For any die result that shows the hit symbol, you will need to resolve the hits. If the monster is in a space with a hero, the player controlling the hero will choose to discard an item for each hit to negate the attacks, or they will be defeated. When a hero is defeated, they are moved to the starting position that is listed on their hero badge, and the terror marker is moved up one position. If the monster is in the space with a villager, then the villager is removed from the board, and the terror marker is moved up one position. After you have resolved the movement and die roll for a monster, do the same for other monsters who have a symbol at the bottom of the card. Villagers will be added to the board throughout the game via monster cards. The monster card will tell you where to place the villager. The villager token will have a location listed on it. This is the villager's safe location. If you're able to get the villager to the safe location, you will remove the villager from the board and then draw one perk card. Each monster will be treated differently. Be sure to keep your eye on the monster mats that have been selected for your game so that you know what objectives to be aiming for. You and your fellow heroes will be moving around the map, trying to keep the villagers and yourself from being attacked by monsters, while collecting items to be used to defeat monsters. Getting villagers to their safe location will get you perk cards, and perk cards will help you defeat the monsters. And that's all you need to know to jump into Horrified. Stick around to see reminders about setup and circumstantial rules for the game runner. The monsters suggested for the first game are the creature from the Black Lagoon and Dracula. For a novice game, any two monsters, with one being a monster your team has never faced. A standard game uses any three monsters. And if you're up for a challenge, use any four monsters. During setup, draw and place 12 items on the board. Remember, when the share action is used, it applies to all heroes in the active player's location and not just the active player. When resolving the monster strike portion of the monster card, don't forget to also resolve the strike for the frenzied monster. This may result in a monster striking twice during the phase. Monsters always move toward the closest hero or villager. If there's a tie, the monster will move toward the hero. If the two options are both heroes or both villagers, then the active player chooses. If, after a monster moves, they are in an empty space, do not roll the attack die. There isn't anyone for them to attack. If a monster is attacking in a space with a villager and a hero, the monster will attack the hero. As with movement, if there are two heroes, the active player chooses who is attacked. The same is true if there are two villagers in the location. The active player will choose which will be defeated. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that it's been helpful for you to jump into Horrified. If you found the video useful, please give it a like. And if you didn't, please let me know why. If you're interested in more videos like this, please subscribe.